Hey folks, BFG Neil, and today we're going to talk about Home Assistant. Now it's a great little system that allows you to monitor your earnings and hotspots and eventually you can set up notifications for it and in the future I want to do some more videos for allowing you to track trackers with it with the same system. So this base video goes over how to install Home Assistant, what you need and how to do that process and at the end of it you'll be able to track wallets and hotspots. Now all you need to get going with this kit is a, is a Raspberry Pi, I've got some added heat sinks here, an SD card, I use this A2 rated 64 gig card and a case. Now I use a custom case here but you could use any Pi case and the files for this case are linked in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is download Home Assistant. Home Assistant is so much more than what we're going to be doing with it today so please have a look at the other features it can do, I just find it immensely useful as a little Raspberry Pi project that you can run from home. So they've got a full guide to installation, they even have a Raspberry Pi specific guide, lists everything you need, how to use Bellina, but we're just gonna show you here today. The main reason we're going to this guide is that it lists where to grab the image from. We're just gonna copy and paste this URL to download the Home Assistant for Raspberry Pi and download it. And that's it, we just need to flash the SD card now, so I've got a little card reader here that I bought off Amazon. I'll link it in the description and then just plug it in. So we're going to use Bellina Etcher, select the image, select the SD card that you're going to do and then click flash. It will decompress the image, write it and then verify it. So this process can take a little while. And then we're just going to put the SD card in the bottom of the pie. I've also 3D printed a case here and I'll link to the STL file. So if you want to use this case, you can too. There's plenty of other Raspberry Pi cases around, um, but I just quite like this design. It's it's quite nice that you, you can tuck it in and then there's little latches at the bottom that force it, force it in place so it keeps it nice and tight. Uh, and I've also upgraded it with some heat sinks just to make it run better. You can put fans in it, but they become quite loud like that. So I prefer to just put the decent heat sinks on and they'll run absolutely fine. And the, yeah, this case comes with a special lid that will only go in one way. So it's really neat. It was designed for a, for a DIY helium hotspot, so it's got the hole for the antenna there, but you can see it's quite nice and vented, and it's got a little uh, access point for the SD card and lights, and it's even wall mountable. And that's it, plug that in and wait for it to load, and you'll be able to go to it with this Home Assistant URL. It takes a little while to set, set up the system, so in the meantime, you can grab the app. The app's great because you can set notifications to yourself or view the dashboard on the, on the go from anywhere. And there you go, some, some of the screens from the app. Now the process for installing this takes roughly 10, 15 minutes. So just give it some time. But once it's done, you'll be able to set up a user account. And click create an account. Once you're in, it'll ask you to set a name for this location. And you can also click the detect button to select your location. If you need to check any units or currencies, you can do this here and then just click next. You can choose to submit diagnostics reports to Home Assistant, but I choose not to here. And that's it, that's Home Assistant all set up. This is the main dashboard for it. You'll have some developer tools, some configuration options you can do from here, uh, but we're going to those in more detail. First thing we're going to need to do is go to your profile by clicking the name bottom left and then click advanced mode. This just gives us some extra features to allow us to really use Home Assistant how we want to. And then up next we're going to install an SSH add-on. This is going to allow us to install the community store. This can't be done automatically and must be done via, via command so having this web terminal interface to be able to run this command is essential. Once it's installed, we're gonna enable Watchdog, which just double checks that the service is running, auto updates and show in sidebar. The most important step with this add-on is that we go to configuration and set a password. If we don't set a password, it, it will just cause the program to close and it will never work. So just update the password and click save. And once that's done, we can go back to the info tab and start the service. On the right hand side, you'll see some metrics about how much CPU it's using, how much RAM it's using, but just click terminal in the sidebar. The first time loading this, you might get a 502 error. So just give it some time and refresh the page and it should start working. We only actually need to run one command to install the community store. I put it in the video description so you can copy it from there and just install the community store. 
This installs the repos in the back end of the system so we can then enable it from the add-ons menu. And then all we need to do is go to configuration, settings, and you can restart Home Assistant. And once it's rebooted, we can go to configuration, devices and services, and add the Home Assistant Community Store, just hacks. You have to confirm that you know you're gonna be installing community software, basically. There could be bugs, there could be hacks, and this just confirms it. The second part is that you need to log in with a GitHub account. So I've skipped that part for you. It should be fairly easy for you to set up a GitHub account. And that's it, that's Hacks installed. It should now be viewable on the left-hand side menu and we can do some configuration for it. One thing I recommend doing now is going to configuration and add-ons and disabling that SSH add-on. It's quite a powerful add-on. You shouldn't leave this running. So we're just gonna stop it and uninstall it. We can now go to the Hacks menu, integrations and add the Helium component. We just search for Helium, click it from the list. This takes a long while to show up. Once it's loaded, you'll see download the repository with hacks on the bottom right corner. Just click that and click download. You can select what version you want, but generally the one that's already in there is fine. And there we see Helium blockchain listed. The next step is, as always, it's best to reboot Home Assistant when you install something new. So configuration, settings, and restart. The next thing we're going to do is install some cards for displaying the information. So we can go to front end under hacks and these are all linked in the description. The first one's uptime card. And the next one is apex charts. And the last one they recommend is called Minigraph. The next thing we're going to do is install a file editor. This will allow us to set out what hotspots we want to track and what wallets we want to track. So we install a file editor to be able to edit the configuration files. This is nice and easy. Add on store, install the file editor. And as per usual, I like to enable Watchdog, auto update and show in sidebar. We can now click start and you'll see the same stats again of how much CPU this is using. And click file editor in the menu. This is nice and easy, don't get too worried. Um, up the top left is a folder icon. This will allow you to select which file you want to edit and we want to edit the configuration.yaml. The sensor information that you need to paste in here is in the description, but basically it's in this format platform helium, what hotspots and what wallet. After we set this, we obviously want to reboot again. After it's rebooted, we can click this developers tool on the left hand side and you can see we've got some new sensors. One's the helium oracle price, one's the wallet and one's rough chili bird, which is a hotspot we followed. So you can go to your dashboard, edit the dashboard and add these cards. One of the easiest ones to do straight away is the entities card. So this is auto filled for you. You can just pick it from by adding card. Uh, we do have some custom cards here and this is all available from the link in the description um, to show you how to use it. But I've just copied and pasted it in here for tracking the Oracle price. The next card we're gonna add is an uptime tracker card. And this is gonna follow the hotspot rough chili bird that we've chosen. So we just click Entity and select Rough Chili Bird and click Save. And the last card we're going to install is the Wallet Tracker. So I've copied this code from the repo and you'll see that once saved, I go back in and you can just edit the title. The information is quite easy to read in these cards, so if you do need to change anything, you can see which. So here we're just going to edit the title and call it HNT Balance. I left it running for a few days so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I also edited the graphs so they were lines rather than bars. You can do this quite easily. It's quite easy to read how they're laid out. Um, you can just click edit dashboard, edit one of the panels. 
and you'll see the bottom line there. I've changed it to type line. And that's it. Everything you need to get started with Home Assistant for tracking your Helium hotspots and wallets. Now the Home Assistant system is so much more powerful than what we're using. There's so many more advanced configurations, but I just wanted to get you going and get you some basic graphs going. In the future, we'll be doing videos on, for example, how to add a tracker to the system and display it on the dashboard. Um, that'll be coming in future videos. So if, if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. Bye for now.